faces, non-flat faces. These are things that they might be fine for an animation, but for 3D printing they'll have a problem. The reason for that is that, if you think about it, a 3D print, it has to be a solid object with nothing kind of floating around. You know, a two-dimensional face, if we look at the monkey and I grab a face, a, a two-dimensional face can't be, um, if I delete this, you know, you can't print something that doesn't have three dimensions. Um, you can only print something that is sort of solid in 3D. So that's why we need to check our object to make sure that everything is printable. So one, when we run this check, we'll see it's got a few things wrong. So I'm going to hit clean up and make manifold. And you'll see that it, it changed some things around the eyes. I'll just undo that and show you again. So what's actually happened, and there's still a few things wrong with it. If I check all again, it'll still have some intersecting things, and we can see them here. If you look around the eye, this eye actually pops out sort of behind um, the ridge around the eye. So a 3D printer won't really like that. That'll need to be cleaned up. But the other thing we can do, most 3D printing software also runs checks like this and can also clean up our objects. Um, so, you know, here we could we could do this ourselves. We could probably, you know, move this and, and get it in a slightly better position and so on. But I think we might actually get the 3D printing software to be able to do that for us this time. But when you're modeling your own objects, these are the things that you'll need to look for. You know, are all my things connected and are any of the faces sticking through other faces? And these are things that will cause problems for a 3D printer. Okay, so once we've got our object, let's say it's all ready to export. Um, we have to apply its scale, because if we look at the scale here, you know, I, I scaled it up. So I'll go um, Shift A, no, Control A, sorry, and just apply the scale. Now everything's set at 1, that's good. Now I'm going to export it, and we're going to export it as an STL file. STL stands for stereolithography, and that's the file that we use for 3D printing. So I click Export, and I'm going to to go to, um, in my project folder for this class, uh, Digital Tools, and I've made a folder called STL Files, and I'm going to call it um, monkey.stl. And very importantly, I'm going to click this box here that says Selection Only, because if you have a scene with lots and lots of different objects in it, it will try to export all of them, and maybe Blender will crash, or maybe it will export a huge file. So always tick this box, selection only. So then I'll hit export STL, simple as that. The next thing you need to do is you need to download um, this software here. Um, so the, the 3D printers we have at AVA are the FlashForge um, 3D printer. So you need to download this software here called FlashPrint and just you know check what operating system you have. In my case, I downloaded Windows 64-bit um, Okay, so once you've downloaded that, you go ahead and open it up. So where's my one? Do I have it open already? Nope. So flash, flash print five. Okay, so in the app, you might also have to set um, what type of printer we're using. And I'll put the model of the printer that we have in the description of this video. Okay, so once you've got um, flash print set up, you can go and um, load a file, you know, bring in that 3D model we made and you know, just navigate to where it should be. And I want the monkey STL file. I'm gonna open that. And there's the monkey. Now, it looks pretty tiny. So, th you know, that might just be because the way I set the scale in Blender, I probably didn't set it to be very big, but we can rescale it um, here in the 3D printing software. So, there's a whole bunch of functions and you know, we might explore them through troubleshooting in class as we go, but I'll just show you a few things. So, scale. You know, say I put this to 500%. There we have a bigger monkey, and we can see its actual real-world size here. It'll be 35 millimeters long, so about three centimeters long. So I could make that, if I made that six, the monkey becomes, yeah, about four centimeters long. Okay, so that's good. Um, the other thing that we'll have a look at is um, adding support material. So support material... Um, is, I'll just show you, it, it makes the monkey stand up in the space for a start. And also, if I clear this, a 3D printer can't print an object that's just floating in nowhere. 
um, the way that the plastic comes out of the 3D printer, it has to start by touching the base of the printer, which is where this grid is. So that's why we need these support structures that can um, go underneath our model as it prints, and then, then we break them off and, um, and clean it up at the end. There's different types of supports. I can clear these, and I can put in the tree supports. Um, and you can change the thickness of these here. For now, I think um, you know we can use the simple um, uh, rectangular supports. And also, sometimes, depending on what we're printing, we might not need all of them. So we c if I click Remove here, I can actually you know take a few away if necessary. But a bit of this is trial and error, just to see how many supports you need. You can save a little bit of plastic by taking some away. OK, so once we've got our support materials, we might also want to check um, whether the file is, um, is printable. Now, do I have repair functions here? Let me just see. No, it's not actually giving me any warnings, so I'll just see. I'm guessing that if, if the file, when we import it, comes out red, then perhaps it has problems. Um, you, most 3D printing software nowadays, if something's wrong in the model, it'll give you the option to repair it. Um, and I don't actually see the repair function here. That might be something we'll have to look at in class. But let's just export this and get it ready to print. And then um, we'll see if this whole process works, hey? OK, so here's our model. We've got the model with the supports. And I'm going to go, oh, here, start slicing. That's what we want. Hey, guys, so I'm just making uh, an extra little bit to this video that we forgot to have in before. So we've added the supports. And as we found last week, we also want to add a raft. So after I've added the supports and I start slicing, I just want to jump into expert mode. And under raft, I want to enable the raft and just hit yes. And then after we hit slice, it's going to show us that little raft, which we discussed in class. If I activate the preview, you'll see it's just added this little, um, this little extra section right here, which will um, make sure that the support material and the monkey stick to the base of the printer correctly. OK, so once we've done this, we will local save, save to local, and just save the, uh, the GX file. So I've done this a few times. So now I'll make this monkey number three. .gx, save that, and you can pop it on a USB drive, and then you can bring it um, to the U uh, 3D printers and 3D print your model. Okay, guys, wonderful. Bye-bye.